College track and field is so competitive that it's basically professional level. That is why the best teams take recruiting incredibly seriously. The indoor season is barely underway, and we've already seen Graham Blanks not only break the collegiate record in the 5K, but also hit the Olympic standard. But ironically, he would have been a low four-star recruit on SEARecruiting.com back when he was in high school. So don't get it twisted. Rankings don't mean anything after the gun goes off. But college coaches at the top of D1 only want to recruit the best of the best. And they cannot do that if they can't first figure out who's real and who's not. If you watch my channel, then you know that I rank track and field recruits across the entire nation in every event. And I do it the same way 247, Rivals, and even ESPN do it in football and basketball. They can tell you right now who the best basketball player is in the class of 2025. For the record, it's AJ DeBonza. Because you can figure out who is really the best, regardless of position or event, if you ask the right questions. I could tell you how I do it. There's professional judgment and a whole bunch of math involved, but I'm sure you really don't care about that, so I won't bore you. And I've already dropped the national list for the boys and for the girls in the class of 2024, with a re-ranking soon to come later at the end of the outdoor season. But ranking high school juniors is a whole different animal because many athletes haven't proven themselves yet. But that doesn't mean they won't pull off some big PR by the end of the outdoor season. So let me be very clear. I know that somebody will get left off my national list who probably deserves to be on it, at least for right now. But we do already know a lot of the names that the top programs in D1 are focused on at this very moment. So here is a breakdown of the top 10 high school boys recruits in the class of 2025. They're not the only five stars on my national list, but from what we have to go off of, they are clearly the best heading into this season. If you click the link in the description, you can view my full ranking list for the top recruits in the entire nation because you or someone you know just might be on it. If you don't see a list for your grade class, it's likely because there is one in the works that will be coming out soon. And even if you're not on the list yet and you wanna go D1 and you think you deserve a chance to get ranked on my national list, then you can also send me your information on my website. I must admit, there's no guarantee that you'll get on, but it does give me a chance to consider you. And if you disagree with me about any of the rankings, that's fine, because rankings don't mean anything after the gun goes off. And if anything that I say actually connects with you, it is always greatly appreciated if you would please like and subscribe. But if I don't, just let me know in the comment section because I try to read them all. Rank number 10 in the nation, I have a three-way tie, starting off with Daniel Wimbush out of California. He's the best combo hurdler in his class, ranked top 10 in the nation in the 110 hurdles and the 300 hurdles, but he is also tied with two sprinters. The first is Caleb Kelly out of Ohio, and the second is Justin Stewart from Texas. Both of them are ranked top 15 in the 100 but top five in the 200 meter dash. They all rate as a 91 overall rating on my scale, but I wouldn't be surprised if any of them climbed up this list by the end of the outdoor season. Ranked number nine is a talented distance runner, Josiah Tostenson from Oregon, and he is also a 91 overall rating. He went top five in the 3200 for his entire class, but he's also just outside the top 10 in the 1500. There's no way to know where he'll end up in recruiting, but I'm sure the Oregon Ducks are taking notice. But the number eight spot goes to Vincent Recapero, who will no doubt be competing against him out of the state of Washington. He gets a 92 overall rating and edged out Josiah for this spot to get it. He went number one in their class for the 3200 and just one spot ahead of him in the 1500. Rivalries don't have to wait until college anymore to get started. And this is one that I see coming from a mile away. Ranked number seven is another sprinter, Christian Dixon from North Carolina. He's a 92 overall rating who went top 10 in both sprint events, the 100 and the 200, which means that the Tar Heels better act fast 
if they want to keep him in state and away from the SEC. The number six spot, however, goes to the first athlete in my top 10 to get ranked in three separate events on the national list. Peyton Summers of Colorado is ranked top five in the 400, top 10 in the 200, and top 25 in the 100. If you are a sprinter, that is what a 93 overall rating actually looks like as a junior. The number five recruit on my list stands out because Kai Evans of Florida is perhaps the most versatile recruit in the entire nation. His 93 rating was obvious because he went top five in the class in the 200 meter dash, but was the number one ranked athlete in the 400 hurdles. The time he put down in that event would do damage in many places in D1 right now. So if I were the Gators, I would move him very high on my recruiting board. The number four recruit earns the title of the best distance runner right now in the class of 2025. Owen Powell out of Washington was the top 800 meter runner, but he was also top 15 in the 1500 and the 3200. That range got him a 94 overall rating, and it means that he is truly elite talent. So it doesn't really matter what he does right now, as much as it does what he's going to do in the future. That said, the number three spot on this list had to go to C.D. Jai out of Georgia. As a short sprinter, he was number two in the nation in the 200, but number one in the nation in the 400 meter dash. He's a 94 overall rating, and I promise you, the Georgia Bulldogs are going to try to sign him because that is what they do. They steal all of the top 10 ranked athletes they can in the sprints and the jumps, especially when it's homegrown talent. However, the final two names on this list are the only two boys in the nation to rank number one in more than one event for their class. That is why Benjamin Shue of New Jersey had to get the number two spot. He's a 95 overall rating and the only thrower to make this list. His shot put and discus were way better than anyone else his age. So it's safe to say that somebody has to drop a big PR this season if they want to knock him off the throne as the best thrower in the class. Yet after all that, the number one recruit in the nation with the 96 overall rating on my scale is Maurice Gleaton Jr. out of the state of Georgia in the sprints. The Bulldogs don't need to thank me for this one because I'm sure they already figured it out. He led his class in the 100 and the 200, but he's also top 25 in the 400 meter dash. He is also a football player, so there's really no way to know how this story is going to end. But regardless of how things go on the field, he clearly has a bright future on the track. And every sprinter in the nation will now be coming for him as a result. But who cares? Because they first have to figure out how to catch up with him first. Division one track and field is highly competitive. That is why getting recruited to compete in it is so hard to do. The boys on this list are the best right now. But remember, rankings don't mean anything after the gun goes off. With two full seasons of high school remaining, there's no way to know how their stories will end. But I'm pretty sure they're going to involve a whole bunch of D1 offers. And for everyone else on my national list ranked below them, you now know who exactly you need to be in order to climb your way up, which is totally fine because all of these boys clearly have the talent to try and hold you off. Remember to check the full boys list on my website using the link below because you or someone you know just might be on it. And like I said before, if you think I got it wrong, that is totally fine. And you can let me know in the comment section below because rankings alone won't ever win an NCAA championship, but talented athletes definitely do. And remember, it's always greatly appreciated if you would please like and subscribe.